Hello everyone, welcome back to another Community Roundup video. Boy, it's been a long time since we've done one of these. In this series, we take a look at interesting tutorials that have been put up on YouTube by different Blender creators, as well as different courses that are available to help you with your Blender skill development. And I also just like sharing some projects that I found pretty interesting and that might give you some inspiration. So let's jump straight into it. So Gleb Alexandrov, one of the main Creative Shrimp team members, has put the first chapter of their cinematic lighting course for Blender up on their YouTube channel. So this is freely available for everyone to watch. It's the Still Life Light Blender tutorial series parts one to five. It's quite a comprehensive introduction to lighting in Blender, putting an emphasis on cycles and how the realistic lighting it provides can be utilized to nicely present a subject in a scene. It will go through the fundamentals like explaining how light works in Blender, how to modify the values, but then also makes reference to the key theory points like three point lighting and how changing the different values affects things like the shadow presentation. There's also advice for getting more cinematic compositions with your lighting, for example, reverse key lighting when it's an appropriate time to use that, how to block lights in certain ways, and there are also some interesting tips in there about making it easier for yourself to visualize the lighting differences in your scene. For example, I picked up a tip in the second video about how you can put your renders in different slots in Blender and then swap between them so you can make a quick comparison. And this can also be controlled with hotkeys. I didn't know about that beforehand, so that's something I might end up doing now in the future. And also, like I said, this is a part of their cinematic lighting course. So if you watch this and you happen to find it useful and you like Gleb's presentation style, which is quite calm and beginner friendly, then you're welcome to check out the full course on Blender Market or even if affiliate link in the description. And yeah, I think it's quite generous of them that they've actually made one of these chapters available for free. So moving on, we're going to take another look at Simon 3D's channel. This is someone I have recommended in a previous community roundup video after meeting them at the Blender conference. They've been producing more content over the last month or so, specifically focused around stylized tutorials. So for example, you can see here how to create a stylized fire shader that can create 1000 different flames. So yes, as you can tell, there's some like proceduralism involved in here. And then they've also got on the other side of things, dreamy anime styled water shader in Blender. That one's going to be quite useful for people, I think. How to make procedural vortex in Blender in under 10 minutes and cartoony spider sense in Blender. So you may remember them from before. They do tend to do quite a lot of stylized content and it feels like they're really leaning into that now. And I know that there are a lot of people in the community that are interested in anime style animation type content. So yeah, you might find that interesting. And for all of the people that we show in these videos, if you do follow along with their tutorials, consider sending some of your results to the creators because I'm sure they'll find it quite exciting to see. So another project I want to share, which is also a tutorial, comes from one of my friends, Chris Bettini. And in this every creating the Kalatni effect using the simulation nodes with geometry nodes. You may be aware that simulation nodes is one of these features that's coming to geometry nodes in the future, which basically lets you simulate a change in data over time. Really great for getting like all kinds of different motion effects and looping functionality. This particular tutorial was inspired by the Rings of Power series introduction. So if you watch that show, you might recognize this. I think it's a really interesting technique to go for for an educational tutorial. And personally, I think it's nice to see Chris making some educational content because they have a very keen eye for making all kinds of like really cool and interesting stylized effects. One of my other favorite ones, which I think I did recommend before, was the Making Realistic Water in Blender tutorial, which I was so interested in that I went and adapted into a view tunnel technique, which I've been using with one of my other add-ons, modular workspaces. So when I look at Chris's work, I always think there's a lot of value hidden away in these videos. And you can also follow them on Twitter if you're interested in seeing more cool experiments. Actually, taking a quick look at Chris's Twitter feed, we can see this post here where 80 Level shared one of their attempts at a paint stroke effect. Now, this is actually related to another community project we're going to take a look at later, but uh, you can see the kind of quality they put into their work. Another video I found particularly useful comes from Jan Sculpt. So Jan is like one of the, I would say, the leading sculpt artists for Blender in the community. If you're not aware of them, they do a bunch of like popular culture sculpts, but done in a rather stylized way. So you can see different characters from Arcane, Knuckles from Sonic the Hedgehog, other characters as well. That's typically been the content they've mostly been known for doing, but they've also been going kind of back into the theory and educational tutorial space. So there's this video, how to sculpt the skull for beginners in Blender anatomy, proportions, and the five stages. One thing I really liked about this was the presentation style. The way that we're looking at the screen, and there are also annotations happening over the top of it, it's very well explained. You can see here they've put a lot of effort into making things very nicely visually presented. While they do spend a lot of time talking about the theory and also like giving advice for how to approach sculpting a skull from scratch, they do then actually show you what they describe as the five stages of putting a human head shape together. So you can actually watch and follow along as they do that live. I was impressed by the quality of this one. I think if you're interested in kind of increasing the accuracy of your sculpts or if you want to just study anatomy in general, definitely a must watch. I will also mention as well that Yan does have a Gumroad store page where they have a collection of other educational content, including like full recording files for their different types of sculpts. For example, if I click on Vi, you can see that in this package, you have 22 hours of real time recording as well as the blend files which come with it. So yes, a lot of content in there to dive into. Now I have already mentioned this store page in a previous video, but I feel like if I'm recommending his new content, then it'd be nice to support him 
by also showing the store page again. So let's talk about short films. As you may know, one of our creator friends, Martin Kleckner, has finally released their short film, Heroes of Bronze, The Memory. You can see it down here. It's over half a million views already. That's nice. It's very impressive. Took them a long time to work on, and I highly recommend giving it a watch. We also featured it on the front page of our blend.stream website. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Heroes of Bronze is based around this ancient Greek tale about a son growing up into manhood and kind of taking up the mantle to protect their land. Martin also provides a bit more information about the project down in the description of the video. They have a Patreon if you want to help support them. I do feel like we need to give more support to people that want to make animated short films with Blender because it's a very labor intensive type of work and it doesn't always produce some very rewarding results because it's very difficult to find an audience if you don't already have one. And that will lead us on to our next project. But just to add a bit more information on Martin's YouTube page, you can see they've also done a few short videos mentioning the softwares used to make the short film. And I think that's great because one thing that always crosses your mind when you see these amazing short films is, wow, what software did they use? Or if they say they use Blender, did they use anything else? You know, for like texture painting? Did they use Marvelous Designer for the cloth stuff? Martin's been very transparent about that here. So you can watch these short little videos and it'll provide a quick explanation of how the different softwares were used. Oh yeah, and of course, you may already know Martin's behind the Master 3D Environments in Blender course for CG Boost. So if you've been impressed with their work and you want to, you know, absorb some of their knowledge, that's a very good course to take a look at. Again, I will leave a link in the description because the environmental results you can get from that course are really, really good. So blend stream, blend stream. What is this one? In January, Joshua behind the Serpens add-on and myself teamed up to make a new website intended to help people connect with short films made with Blender. It's up, it's available for you to have a look at. The front page is semi-randomized based on different categories. So there's a really nice variety of stuff to see. You can find all different kinds of creators making stuff with Blender. And you can also sign in with a Discord account and submit films yourself and we can have them attached to a profile like a portfolio. So yeah, it's just a nice like community project. We'll try and do more of it in the future. But of course, no one's being paid to make this. It's like a completely, you know, voluntary thing. But it was a fun project to do for January. And it's there if you're interested in taking a look. So for example, I can just search up Heroes of Bronze, click on that here, it's got its own page. Maybe in the future we can add some extra stuff, but if you click on it, the idea behind this website is that it's just YouTube embeds. So all of the watch time and all of the ad revenue generated from the site goes straight to the original creators. So you can think of it like a kind of democratized Netflix for Blender, I suppose. I don't really like describing it that way because that kind of has like connotations, but if it's easy for people to understand it that way, then fine. Yeah, basically it's about trying to help people find an audience, but obviously it's quite a small project at the moment and things like this are very long term. So if you do get your content on the site, don't expect like a big boost of views. We'll do more of it over time. But hopefully you can see this is just an example of one of many things that gets done outside of this YouTube channel. We do all kinds of different projects here, like products, add-ons, community things like this, and some slightly more secret and not Blender related things. But I just want to take this moment to say if you're interested in the different types of content we make, especially if you like videos like this, then feel free to subscribe and more importantly ring the notification bell so you can get informed of future releases. You're also welcome to check out my Patreon store page at Curtis online slash store we can find a variety of free and paid stuff that we've made for the community there's a lot to dive into so yeah anyway let's move on to more community projects so in the past i recommended riley brown's unlock better color in blender series because i was impressed with their presentation talking about the different color spaces in blender they've now done a four-part beginner tutorial series learn blender for beginners interface and navigation modeling texturing and a finale tutorial one thing that riley offers in these that kind of stands out above other blender tutorials is a high quality production value and it feels kind of like con conversational, almost like you're just hanging out with a mate learning Blender or something. I like to give you different options when it comes to learning Blender because, as I've said many times before, people have kind of different personalities and they resonate with different creator personalities, so you may connect with a certain person's educational style more than others. So the more options, the merrier, especially if you've been having trouble trying to find someone you can connect with properly. Moving on to an add-on update, there's a package I use called Botanic, which has a nice large collection of different kinds of like vegetation options, so like trees, plants, shrubs, rocks all that kind of stuff that's great for architectural visualization and environment artwork. Well, they've added a new big update to the product called Animate Everything. So now everything in the product is animated. So you can take a look at the different assets in action here. I like this because before it was only like the trees that were animated, I think, to a certain degree. Everything is easily customizable and they also have an add-on interface to help you modify the different parameters. So I just wanted to throw in a recommendation there because I'm going to find this useful in the future. You may remember I used it for like my Epoch animation and I've thrown it in some other artwork as well. There are scattering options, ways to randomize the animation, and you can see here you can draw vines. So yeah, if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. 
So you probably know about CG Cookie, they're like a collection of different Blender creators making some nice quality courses and different kinds of educational content. They're also branching off into kind of other areas of like add-on development now as well. I think with Orange Turbine, I believe it's called. But they've been maintaining their content output on YouTube and on here you will find a variety of good educational content, but also they've been experimenting with these short form videos in a series called Why Blender Why, which basically just like explains some of the small quirks about Blender, which I think will be useful for people coming over from other softwares. Okay, you're probably thinking, Curtis we've seen all these channels before we're already subscribed to them we don't need to see that stuff it's already in our sub feeds okay so there's a new channel here called Jasper Pagan and I say they're new but what I mean is they've only kind of recently started doing Blender content specifically and it kind of started off with the uh, bad normals art challenge the default cube blender challenge so they had a video kick off here how I won the default cube blender challenge if you don't know so it was a challenge started by bad normals there and then they got Ducky and Tom CG matter to help review the submissions this was quite a sweet video kind of breaking down with the idea came from relating to some of their previous work as well and also providing a breakdown of like the step-by-step -step, how they ended up putting the project together and turning it into the final challenge submission. I really liked it like the production quality was good and quite entertaining as well I just thought it had a lot of character and I think you'll enjoy it. Also I think it's interesting getting another British accent in here. I've always loved the rock pool aesthetic and I wanted to use that in the render. Uh, the rocks I got from Quicksaw Mega Scans. Do you know what Jasper I like rock pools as well. I'm from Kent when we were younger we used to go to the uh, seaside kind of like around the Margate area and depending on where you go there's like a lot of rock pools there and a lot of freaky crabs I used to have like weird nightmares about it but there was something fascinating about it every time you looked in it was like a kind of microcosm of organic life anyway we're getting sidetracked speaking of art challenges on our discord server we've just started a new one our challenges tend to run for about two weeks the current theme is celebrate a decade and in this you basically choose a decade of your choice it can be from any point in history but you know like the simple ones would be like 80s 90s 60s but you can be really esoteric and go back in time to like 12 40 if you like but basically you just need to produce a piece of artwork centered around that decade and then put it in the submissions channel in our discord server the uh, rules and extra information are in the current challenge channel and there are no like rewards for this except i end up putting the results on my website and maybe sharing them on social media it's just more of like a fun self-improvement challenge for your art skills Okay, so you know when we took a look at Chris's Latney plate and the kind of like brush stroke effect they did? Well, this is what I was referring to earlier. So Alan Wyatt 3D, also known as Tradigital on YouTube, has created this really, really cool looking paint stroke effect. It's like a live filter that applies to your scene in Blender. We could take a look at the video and in this they basically describe how it works. I love like the specularity on the paint strokes, it just looks perfect. So it's a filter that you can essentially integrate into your own projects and it's available on Blender Market and Gumroad. If we click through to have a look, you can see the variety of options they have here on the Road. I know that a lot of people will like this because I don't know it's just fun working with different kinds of artistic filters and one of the nice things about you know geometry nodes and then also the real-time compositor coming is that I feel like we're going to get a lot more options coming up for like live stylistic effects. I've just been really impressed with the results of this one which is why I wanted to throw it in here. God, it looks so good and look it's animatable as well. So for a quick course update, um, one of the main courses I recommend for learning sculpting in Blender is Master 3D Sculpting in Blender by Zacharias Reinhardt, who also did the Launchpad course for CG Boost, who I also recommended in our last video, which was our crash course introduction to what Blender is. I definitely recommend checking that out if you're new to Blender or if there are any friends or family who don't understand what Blender is. My new one hour video should demystify things for you. Please go and watch it, it took ages to make. Anyway, Zach has added a new chapter to this Master 3D Sculpting course, adding rigging, which is brilliant because rigging can be one of those things that's like very difficult to wrap your head around, especially the tool set. So Zach will guide you through the process of sculpting a creature so you can take it from like the original sculpted pose to something more cinematic and then also follow through with how to make that look nice. I think it, that's like a very welcome addition and a very sensible one to add to the course. So yeah, that gets a strong recommendation from me. Again, link in the description. You must also be aware at this point that the latest Blender open movie Charge is available to watch on YouTube. But one really nice thing that the Blender Studio have been doing is now making extra content surrounding that to kind of teach people more about the process. So in this video we have Hjalti or Hjalti. I don't quite know how to pronounce the name. Sorry for my bad English pronunciation. But it's a fantastic video where they explain the pre-visualization process for how they prepared the scenes during the creation of Charge. So they basically run through the breakdown of a scene here where the characters like preparing to go out on their expedition. And I think it's really cool kind of like seeing the blockouts. And they also try to make it entertaining as well at the same time. Um, it's really nice seeing this kind of content coming from the official Blender Studio. I appreciate they're putting kind of more time into like the YouTube channel like this. And I mean, it's not the only thing that they've been investing time into YouTube wise. Back on the official Blender channel, they've started doing like documentary type content. So yeah, I recommend giving it a watch. Hopefully they can 
continue doing stuff like this in the future. All right, let's check back in with Lens Graphics, someone who we spoke about before who's been growing pretty quickly. They've been doing a lot of like popular culture videos, creating popular things from video games, shows, etc. One I liked recently was Doodle Jump, but it's realistic. The reason I like this one is because I played Doodle Jump a lot during school, so it's kind of just funny seeing someone kind of make a cursed realistic version of it, I suppose. I'll never be able to unsee our Doodle having moving eyes. Uh, but no, I love these kinds of breakdown videos. They're quite funny. Obviously, like these RTX ones are quite popular because it kind of just like leans straight into the uh, the YouTube gamer culture. And they're really chill, nice ones to watch come to life. All right, Pierrick, animation guru, what do you have for us? How I create stylized 2D VFX in Blender. So if you like the kinds of effects they have in like anime shows or like Arcane, you know, where they're doing like the kind of combat motions and you got all the really like nice accompanying effects. pierrick has been doing a bit of content here to kind of show you how you can do that in Blender. I feel like this is partially, I wouldn't say unexplored territory, but I think there's a lot more work that can be done there. And with the addition of Grease Pencil as well, that's also opened the way for a lot more kind of stylized 2D animation potential, um, especially in terms of animation. So you can see some of that recent content here, how I create the 2D VFX, hand-drawn VFX with Blender's Grease Pencil time-lapse, how I create simple environments for my animation projects, etc, etc. See, I just wanted to make a note there that now there's some more stylized VFX content. So I feel like this would actually go pretty well hand in hand with Simon 3D's videos that we mentioned earlier, you know, with like the fire, the water, the spidey sense, etc. So yeah, just making you aware of that. So what about me? I should have some other projects coming up, like product wise, and some updates to some of the free products we have, like the community centric ones. Um, I've been a bit slow this year because I've been suffering with um, some quite chronic vestibular issues, not to get too into detail. Maybe I will explain that a bit more in the future once we figure it all out. But that's one of the reasons why there's been fewer videos this year. So I apologize for that. But as we've said through like, you know, the recent one hour crash course video, the new Blendstream website, we have still been managing to get some stuff done. So if you made it this far through the video, can you put a sun emoji in the comments? Because we're coming out of winter now, the sun's coming back out and everything's feeling a bit more ah, energetic. If you put that emoji in the comments, I'll be able to see who you are. I love seeing you regulars back in the comments again. So yeah, I've got to get back to work. Remember, you can support me on Patreon. We've got the store stuff. And of course, share the love. If you go over to the other creators, let them know where you came from. Put a smile on their face. And yeah, just have a good day, everyone. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video.